What's going on, everybody? It's the Candy Man, Mike G. Saturday, I had the pleasure of doing an interview with another great YouTuber by the name of Reyes the Entrepreneur. And I'm about to share that video of the interview that we did. And he interviewed me about my vending business. And I know a lot of people have questions about how to start their own vending business. So I just kind of shared my journey in the vending business, how I got started, and the things that I did to continually grow my business. So y'all enjoy the video and make sure you go over and check out my man, Reyes the Entrepreneur's channel. The man is a born hustler. And make sure you leave me a comment in the section below. Let me know what you think about the interview and hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel already so you can get instant notifications every time I make a new video. What you doing, babe? Buying my first vending machine. That guy I interviewed, Mike, mm -hmm. he makes money while he sleeps with vending machines. So I want to make money while I sleep. And... Whoop, got it. She'll be here in two days. So I'm going to go start practicing. I'm going to go take a nap. Practicing what? To sleep. Because remember what Mike said. He said, make money while you sleep. So I'm going to go... Take a nap. <laughs> Babe. What? I don't think that's what he meant. Babe. He's been doing it for so long. He knows what he's talking about, all right? I'll see you when I wake up. Oh, baby. Come here real quick. What? Oh, made 30 cents. In my new series, Entrepreneur Spotlight, I interview entrepreneurs so we could motivate you and so we could show you that we all started with nothing and we didn't let that stop us. Real stories, real businesses, real entrepreneurs. Today, I have the great opportunity to interview a very inspiring entrepreneur, Mike G. He has a vending machine business, personal training business, and he's a rapper. My question is, how are you able to do all of those things, Mike G? Small victories every day. A little victory here, a little victory there. Okay, Mike G, first question. Tell the viewers about yourself. I like to do a bunch of different things. I like to, to figure out how I can make money without having to work for every single dollar that I make. What was the first business you remember starting? The very first business. Yeah, I might have been like eight or nine years old and I took some money that I got for Christmas or my birthday and I got a, a lawnmower out of a garage sale and filled it up with gas and I went door to door. You know, a lot of people ain't gonna turn down the kids so I guess I did pretty well because of that too also. <laughs> <laughs> when and how did you start that business? With what equipment? The way I got started was I went to a thrift shop and I found a triple head machine. So it cost $75 and it had the key and everything. It needed, it needed some work. I got another job at a new place that opened up working security and I asked the guy, could I send it in there? He said, yeah, go ahead, man. So I put it in there and I actually left it for a whole 30 days this time. And I went back <clears throat> to check it out just to see what would happen. And it was $30.25 a quarter. $30 is not much, but if I had 10 of them and they all brought $30, it'd be $300. If I had 100 of them, that'd be $3,000. On top of just anything else, I'm glad I didn't have to be there. I just sit it there and they go back 30 days later. So I felt like, okay, let me get another machine. Why this time I'm looking on Craigslist, offer up eBay, you know, I'm looking on all the sites to see if I can find some used ones. I didn't want to buy a new one. To me, it didn't make sense. That's smart. So I'm looking online and I found a deal for 12. I found a good little deal and I said, okay, I wasn't quite looking for 12. I was only looking for a couple more, but let me go get them. I went and got them, mm. cleaned them up, scrubbed them. And started putting them in a lot of places, and I was getting them out really fast. Like, every other day, I was getting the machine out. Hey, man. Hey, that's a hustle right there. 
How do you find your locations? Do you just go up to random stores or people you know? Well, at first, I was just going through the people that I knew. And once I kind of tapped into all that, <laughs> and that was over with, then I had to find other ones. So I would go to the locations I already had machines, and I would go in the little areas around and see how many I could get. Roughly. How many machines you got out there making money for you while you sleep? While I sleep right now, I have about 40. Hey, good job, man. You're putting in work. What's your biggest obstacle at this moment? Obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off the goal. So as long as you're focused on your goal, things are going to come up day to day, regardless. So I don't really look at them as obstacles. I just look at them as things that I need to do to get to my final goal. Do you have a lot of competition? There are, there are competitors out there because there are certain places I go and I already see some machines up. But I don't feel like it's a lot, a lot of competition Yeah. because there are always businesses that are constantly opening and there are businesses constantly closing. So new people are opening businesses. Do you have tough customers? Have you ever had to take a vending machine away from a store because maybe they mistreat it or maybe they try getting into it. I, I have taken the machine out of a place before. I had it in the hotel and I left it there. And I think the first month it made like five quarters and the second month it made two quarters. And it was just a small location and it wasn't even worth really leaving it there because my candy would go bad. But other than that, I, um, I haven't had any problems at all. Hey, do you pay commission? To the location? Do, oh, no, nah, I've never paid commission to any of the locations. So they're doing you a favor? Well, it's kind of like we're doing each other a favor. Because some locations, they don't have food. And their employees would like a handful of candy or something sometimes just to get through. So it's kind of like we help each other out. But recently, I worked with a guy named Clinton Hart. He played in the NFL for seven years. He was number 42. He played with the Chargers. He does something, a charitable event every year at Christmas time called Feed 42, where he feeds 42 indigent families. And I've helped him out for the last four years. And now I'm going to be donating a portion of my proceeds towards the Feed 42. So now I'll use that when I'm going in to get my locations. Hey, man, you got your sales pitch on point. You kind of make me want to donate money. <laughs> All right, so we were talking about goals. What's your goal by the end of 2018? I'd like to have about 200 machines out by the end of the year. Yeah, and do you have 200 machines ready to put out, or are you just going to start buying as business grows? Well, I probably have about 100 and something machines still to go. What's your big seller? Gumball, uh, M&Ms? What do you sell? It's really hard to say because it's, Location to location, it differs. Gumball is a good profitable product because it only costs like like two cents per gumball, and you make twenty five cents on it. So the profit margin is probably the largest for gumballs. You're expanding into sodas, correct? You're trying to. Yeah, I just got a soda machine and I placed it up. I have a snack machine that I picked up. But this is, this, is, this is a learning experience and a journey for me. I'm still in my beginning stages as well. Hey, but you're not letting that stop you. And that's what I like right there. Nah, definitely not. Hey, have you ever thought of getting into the sticker vending machines or nah? I don't know. I'm doing all right with what I have. Maybe in the future, I'll branch out to other things. I'm always looking at different types of vending machines. What motivates you to keep trying to build your own business? You just don't want to work for anybody else anymore? <laughs> Yeah, I really don't want to work for anybody. I like to work for myself. Why would I, you know, slave away day after day putting in all these hours for a low-paying job yeah. to make somebody else bitch? Now, let's just say somebody in California in a small town with curly hair wanted to start his own vending machine business. What advice would you give him? I would say to look on one of the social media sites like like I mentioned before, Craigslist, eBay, Amazon, but preferably some of the smaller ones, though, like the Facebook ones or the ones that are more where it's going to be cheaper. And if you're like handy at all, get one that's used and needs a little work and just go and put it in a location. 
just ask people, ask some of your friends. Usually your friends are the best place to start. People let you know they have businesses. And see if you can place one in there. A lot of times people will just help you out if they're your friend. And it, sometimes it'll surprise you to make more than you think. What if you go to a location and they already have a vending machine? Would you just go somewhere else or would you still convince them to let you put yours there? It kind of depends. If I go to a location that has a snack machine and a soda machine, then I would still try to put one in because not everybody wants to get a full pack of Skittles or a full pack of M&M's. Some people might just want a handful. Or their kids want something sweet. But they don't want them off the wall, hyper off the sugar, so they don't want to give them the whole bag. But maybe they give them a 25 cent handful. Do you have a favorite quote? I actually have quite a few of them, but I'm going to give you one. If it is to be, it's up to me. Explain that to me. Well, if you want something to happen, it's up to you to do it. Because nobody's going to do it for you. What did you want to be when you were growing up? When you were little, Mike, when you were little, Mike, without all the muscle, what did you want to be? Uh, I used to like to watch a lot of action movies. That's why I got into martial arts and, and exercising and working out. I always kind of liked that, that personification. Hey, why not a stunt double? Ever thought about it? Oh, I've thought about all those things. Applied for a few places, had some things come up, but... I haven't followed through on anything. I had so many other things going on. Oh, man. But you, maybe one day still. Uh, you're a busy man. You're a busy man. But, hey, hey, if I ever become famous and I need a stunt double for myself, I'm going to put a curly hair wig on you, all right? <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So people are going to be motivated by your story, and they're going to want to check out your YouTube channel. Where can people find you? Uh, go to Chrome Vending Journey, and mine will pop up. All right, so we're pretty much done. Any last questions you want to say to somebody who wants to start a vending machine business? Uh, just, just get started. You know, don't be scared. Don't think about what you got to do and this and that. If you think about too much, then you'll talk yourself out of it. Sometimes you could be your own worst enemy. You have this little voice telling you you can do it, and then you have this other little voice telling you, all the things that is going to be in the way and why you can't do it. So you have to shut this one out and just listen to your gut. It's the same. By the yard, it's hard. But inch by inch, anything's a cinch. Oh. You know, if you take it, if you take it little by little, you can achieve it. Just get started. Yes. And as you go, you'll learn. You'll readjust your aim as you're going and you'll figure out what's working and what's not. Yes, yes, Mike. Uh, 1,000 percent correct, man. Just want to give a huge shout out to Mike G, owner of Chrome Vending, for giving me the opportunity to interview him and for sharing all that free 99 knowledge. If you like this interview, you could check out the ones I did with GetSticker.com, an online custom sticker business, and the interview I did with a personal trainer, where he shares his beginning story of how he started giving out free workouts outside of his local high school to help him grow his business.